Now, if you've been a follower of mine here on Twitter for the past month or so, then you probably know I've been really researching makeup from the 17th to the 18th to even the 19th and 20th centuries. It's been quite a wild ride and I've discovered a lot of these makeup products and tips are pretty horrible pretty horrible. Like for instance, if you want to get rid of pimples in the 18th century, they recommend mercury, which um, I guess it works if you're dead. <laughs> but while I was researching all of these books and all of these pamphlets, I began to realize that some of these books actually contained little mini tutorials on how to do your makeup. And that got me to thinking, hmm, this is a makeup channel and I am really obsessed with makeup. Why not do a makeup tutorial based on this? So for today's video, I'm going to take inspiration from this makeup tutorial right here from a book from 1905. This book right here is called Making Up by James Young, which I've sort of talked about in a previous video all about Creolon. And if you haven't seen that video, by the way, you probably should because Creolon's history is kind of really bad. Now, something you should be really aware of is that in the early 20th century, um, makeup wasn't meant for the everyday consumer or for the everyday woman. It was mainly meant for the theater and used only for theatrical makeup, for portraying a character. And so you don't really see the everyday woman taking these makeups or even wearing them. And if you look at beauty books geared towards women from this time period, you see that it's mainly catered towards skincare and not makeup or cosmetics. Also, in addition to this, theatrical makeup was mainly geared towards men and not women. And that's because women generally didn't go into like really heavy grease paints and mascara and eyeliner. They usually avoided that, but men were the ones who really got into that initially. So with that said, and why I'm explaining this in the first place is I'm going to be doing a tutorial that's supposed to be for a man and not a woman. And this is a youth makeup meant for men and you can see it's kind of a strange tutorial. They actually recommend that you place the blush right here, which is like, why? But I'm going to replicate this with my own makeup and see what happens. Now for this initial base application, I'm going to be using this white foundation by Creolon. And this is actually a grease paint, which um, back in these times, they would have used grease paint in place of foundation because it didn't exist at that time. So they would have gone in with that grease paint in the lightest shade and apply that in streaks all over their face. And I'm doing the same thing here with my white foundation. Now they also recommend that after you apply this initial layer that you take your hands and just blend it all in, which um, I would never do because that's first off very messy and second off, it's not very, it doesn't leave a very nice smooth application and you'll see here why. You can see as I'm blending this all out, it just seems really patchy on my skin and overall isn't a good look. Now to compare, I'm going to use my sponge on my other side of my face. And as you can see right here, it's a much more smooth application. It's also much more faster to apply this compared to with your fingers to blend it out. That's like very not good, but overall I have to say when it comes to modern versus old um, application techniques, using a sponge is much, much better. Now, obviously to set this, I need to use a powder and that's what they recommend as well. Here in this section, they recommend using a loose powder, which comes in many colors, including white. To apply this, they use a powder puff and I'm doing that here as well. The good thing about powder puffs, by the way, is that you can reuse and wash them over and over. I like to pop them into the dryer after washing them by hand and they're as good as new so that's always a good thing. Now for the eyes, I need to make my eyes stand out more since whenever you apply white foundation, especially if you have like Asian set eyes, like very basically eyes that don't aren't sunken into your face, if that makes sense. Like if I turn to this side, you can see there's really no depth to my eye socket here. And so when you apply white foundation on top, it sort of makes your eyes disappear. 
not the greatest look, so they don't recommend this in the actual tutorial, but I'm going to recommend it here. I'm going to create a fake crease right here, right in my eye socket area to sort of bring more depth to my eye and to make it stand out more against this white foundation. That way, when I apply the rest of my makeup, my eyes just don't disappear into the abyss and you can actually see them much more easily. There were no instructions on how to apply the eyebrows aside from brushing out any extra powder from the eyebrows, so I decided I would copy the painting as seen here. So first I made the outline of this eyebrow, then filled that all in. To draw in the actual hairs, I'm going to use this eyeliner which I absolutely hate. It's horrible. However, I don't want to waste any products, even if I hate them, so I try to find other ways to use them up. So I'm just drawing them in, and you can see that it's literally just skipping over my face here, and the formula is just so horrible. I don't like it whatsoever. For the eyes itself, it does say to make up your eyes. Okay. Doesn't really say how or what to use, so... I'm going to reference the painting once again. It looks like a simple line was drawn on the upper and lower eyelid, so I'm going to do that as well. I am assuming they're doing this because it makes the eyes stand out a touch more. Now one of the most common ways to line your eyes in this time period for the theater was unfortunately India ink. I'm not doing that because I'm not putting actual ink by my eyes. So I'm opting for a dark brown eyeshadow, and this is from a palette I'm currently trying to use up. So for the first time here on this channel, I am not going to use falsies, which is a hard habit for me to break, but it makes no sense for me to be wearing them. They only recommend here that you apply a thin coat of black grease paint to your eyelashes to make them stand out more. I'm not going to do that since I know from experience applying grease paint to your eyelashes will make them seep into your actual eyes. And that does not feel good. So what I'm doing instead is using an old mascara. This one is from Huda Beauty, I believe. And I'm going to apply that to my upper and lower lashes. Now for the rouge. This is a very odd part of the tutorial. Um, they actually recommend first that you apply a sort of cream base first which I didn't since I don't really have a cream rouge on hand. So I'm using powder instead, and this is from Laura Mercier. Now, the way that they recommend you apply it is really quite interesting. Like, I can't figure out if they want it to be like a contour or just like, what is it? <laughs> it's like so high up. But I'm taking a very soft brush, and in these times, they will have used a hair's foot instead, which is literally just a rabbit's foot. I'm not gonna do that, so I'm just gonna take a brush instead and apply that right in this area. I do not know the intensity of this from the pictures, so I'm just gonna go for a very light blend. Next comes the moustache, as Vegeta says. But um, this is my first time doing it, and in these times, they would have actually used crepe hair or a fake mustache for this. I don't have that on hand. I'm not going to like buy one either. That's obviously first off a waste of money. I'm not going to be wearing this outdoors like all the time. So why buy it for one use only? And second off, I'm pretty sure these are not eco-friendly. So I'm not buying that. What I'm doing instead is actually like painting it on or at least trying to. But first off, I took a very light shadow and sort of drew in the shape of the mustache. Then started to draw in darker strokes using a darker eyeshadow and then I think I took some brown and then some eventually some black eyeliner to draw in the little hairs. So that's how I did that. It literally just looks so ridiculous. I kind of liked it by the way. Just sort of fun just walking around the house with your mustache on but yeah not as hard as I thought it would be. For the lips they recommend tinting this red. However, I'm not going to do that at first. I'm going to take a pinky peach lipstick and applying that to my lips as so. Then taking a darker brown and then eventually a darker red 
eyeshadow and applying that in the corners to make it to make the lips itself just stand out more. Now for the actual outfit, and as you can see in this sketch, I drew it out since I just wanted to figure out what I was going to do here, but in this sketch you can see I wanted to wear a button-down shirt and suspenders. Also a bow, but I forgot to get that, so... But I basically thrifted everything for this look, and I'm going to show you how I thrifted for that right here. But before we get to that, by the way, we have a sponsor for this video. And that sponsor is Skillshare. Now, I love Skillshare, as it makes learning about new topics and skills much more convenient. And of course, safer since it's all online. And that includes illustration, a favorite of mine. And there are also thousands of classes to choose from. Now, I think sketching out your makeup looks is a good tool. If you're not sure how to start, then I would recommend this class, Mastering Illustration, Sketching, Inking, and Color Essentials by Jazza Brooks. I think this part right here about brainstorming your piece is very relevant here for developing a makeup look. You'd be surprised how important it is to really think through and plan your illustration before you get started. It's extremely important and helps you avoid problems that could show up later and also discover things that can really enhance and bring out the best in your potential illustration. Also, in addition to this, Skillshare costs around $10 per month for an annual subscription. But just for my followers here on YouTube, for the first 1,000 that click this link down below, you'll get access to a free trial of their premium membership. So great deal. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get on to the actual outfit. Now, as you can see in this video on Instagram, here I am shopping for the actual shirt, which I found at Goodwill, I believe a few weeks ago. It costs $5 or so, pretty cheap, and it's from New York and Company. It's, uh, I think it's a 100% cotton. So it works pretty well for this look, which is basically a pretty bad interpretation of early 1900s menswear. <laughs> but um, I think it works okay. Now for these suspenders, I believe this was being sold by somebody who was playing the wedding and it just never happened because 2020 is horrific and a disaster. <laughs> But um, I found this on Poshmark, a second-hand reselling website, and I bought it for, I think, $10, so a great deal. Unfortunately, these are made from fall leather, so they're not very comfortable and also not like really biodegradable, so that's a big negative, but if you can buy second-hand, that's always a good thing. That way you're giving these companies less money to produce even more destructive clothes and accessories. But without further ado, here's the entire look all put together. It has a very vintage -y, sort of fall vintage because it's not very accurate, but um, it's a very fall vintage -y, early 1900s look made for the theater. See my very prestigious mustache right here. I love it, by the way, the best part of this look, I think. But also you have a very odd blush placement, which I still sort of look at it and just, I'm just like... Why is it placed there? Seems kind of odd. But overall, what I think is a good learning experience right here is that makeup during this time period when it was first invented for the for the West, for the Western audiences, for use in theater, was meant for men and not women. It wouldn't be until like the movies got really popular in America that it would start being used for actresses and become more of a female thing. Anyways, that is the end of my video for right now. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you learned about this video, what you learned about makeup in general, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!